the backward to-do list hack that'll make you a productivity superstar. Okay, so the gazillion pound gorilla in the room is obviously that we all have too much to do, right? As entrepreneurs, as human beings nowadays, everyone's overwhelmed, everyone has too much to do, too much stimulus, too many options, too many things that need to be done on a daily basis. So we have to pick and choose. We aren't able to do every single thing that we need to do. So for me, you know, wanting to always be efficient and productive, one of the things that I always tried to do was find a way to organize my life in a way that I could get the maximum amount of stuff done. So I've tried every planner and planning system under the sun. And what I found was, unfortunately, what would happen is I do a really good job putting together my task list. You know, I'm good at listing out all the stuff that needs to be done and I could break them into categories and all this other kind of stuff. The problem is what ends up happening for me is that every single day I get to the end of the day and I find that I had a gigantic list of things to do. A very few of the things that needed to get done got done. So a lot of the tasks end up getting rolled over the next day and they get rolled over and rolled over and rolled over and rolled over. And, and then I find myself rewriting the same task two, three weeks later that I was supposed to be doing two or three weeks ago. Now, part of that is just the fact that I have too much to do and I probably could never realistically get to all of it. But part of it is that it's not really an effective way to manage your tasks or your time. And that's one of the things that I discovered uh, sort of the hard way because that's what I used to do and I spent more time setting up my planner than actually using it. Because once I started to roll over tasks day after day, I eventually just lost interest and stopped even using the planner. I got to a point where I said, well, what is the point of this? I'm not even getting to most of this stuff anyway. So what ends up happening is, you know, um, we end up getting and focusing on all the stuff that's super urgent. So if we have a list of 10 things to do for the day and three of them are urgent, then those three are going to get done. And the seven that aren't are going to get rolled over to the next day and then the next day and then the next day because the urgent things are always going to take precedent. And the problem with that is, you end up in a situation where things aren't balanced. So what I was doing was sort of this sadistic game of whack-a-mole, where what I would do is I would work really hard on the stuff that I needed to get done in my business, but I had no time for my personal life. So then I would start to feel out of balance. And then what I would do is I'd say, okay, I've got to connect with my friends. I've got to do you know some more stuff with my family. So then I'd table the business a little bit and I'd spend a little bit of time doing that. And then the business stuff would start to slide. So then I got to go back over there and whack that mole and start working back on the business again. And so I'm constantly juggling all the things that need to be done and never able to get to a point where I feel in any equilibrium. Something is always being neglected and yet I'm never getting enough done and yet I'm working all the time. And so it became this really difficult, challenging situation about how do I structure things in a way where I can feel better about getting everything done. And maybe stuff isn't going to get done as fast, but it's an illusion anyway. Because even if I put all that stuff on my list, it was never getting done. I just kept pushing it to the next day. So I felt good by having it listed, but I was never doing it anyway. And so what I started to do, and I actually saw um, something about this, so it's not like I invented it, but um, I sort of invented my own version of it. What I started to do is, instead of scheduling my tasks, what I did was I looked at my schedule and I said, all right, how much time do I have in a day that I can realistically do my you know, business or personal life or whatever? How many free hours do I have in a day? And then what I did was I decided to schedule my time instead. So let's just say, for example, you have eight hours in a given day. That's a nice round number and it's you know, pretty average, whatever. So instead of saying, okay, these are the 27 things I need to get done in those eight hours, knowing that most are never going to get done. And then you actually feel bad because you didn't get to half the stuff you meant to get to. Instead, what I did was I started to break it down at a time. So I said, okay, I'm going to spend 90 minutes a day building my personal brand. So whatever things that I want to do, a podcast or videos or, you know, whatever other kinds of things I'm going to do, I'm going to do an hour and a half a day on that. I'm going to do an hour a day on my family. 
So some days that's going to be stuff that we're, we're doing fun. Some days it might be, you know, more chory, but it's still stuff for and with my family. I'm going to spend one hour on myself. So maybe that is, you know, go to the gym. Maybe it's, you know, read something. Maybe it's, you know, whatever it is. But the idea is that's something that I'm going to do because it is for me. And then I'm going to spend, you know, two hours on product development. And I'm going to spend an hour and a half on marketing, whatever it is. So the idea is you think about all the buckets that you have in your life, you know, your personal, your, you know, your, your friends, your, you know, your professional, your business, whatever it is, stuff that all needs to get attention in your life for you to feel centered, for you to feel balanced, for you to feel successful and break out your schedule based on the number of hours you have and break it into blocks of time. And then the best way to do it is to, if you need to, use like an egg timer or a timer on your watch or your cell phone where you set it for working that amount of time on what you're doing. And you spend that amount of time instead of being focused on what tasks you get done. And you can still, if you need to, work from urgent to not. But this way you're spending a little bit of time every day on all the most important things in your life. And by doing that, while things you know, sort of seem to be moving more slowly in terms of progress, because let's face it, if you worked four hours a day on some business thing, and now you're cutting it to two, it's going to move a little bit slower, but you're going to be moving all of the things along together. So you're going to feel like you have a better balance. You're going to feel as though you're getting done what you set out to get done. And you're not always going to go to bed with that giant to-do list that you feel guilty about never getting to. So the backward trick is instead of scheduling the tasks, actually schedule the time and break down your time schedule. And it doesn't need to be the same every day. It works for me to do it that way, but maybe you like to do, you know, four hours on business today and then two hours tomorrow or whatever it is. But if you break down your week by scheduling blocks of time for the various things you need to do, and then you just time each of the things that you're working on when you're in each bucket, what'll happen is, you'll be able to keep all of those balls in the air without playing whack-a-mole and letting things keep getting imbalanced. You'll be able to keep it all balanced. You'll be able to move the entire freight train forward in every area of your life. And it will make you feel a lot more balanced, a lot more successful, and ultimately a lot happier. Remember, no matter what it is you want to do with your business in your life, don't compromise, optimize.